Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm at Atlanta BrickCon in the middle of the Great Ball Contraption layout. And there have been a bunch of hardworking builders keeping this running here at the show, so I'm joined by one of the builders now. If you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll dive on in. Okay, awesome. So I'm Ethan McCain. I'm from Southern Indiana, and I'm one of the five builders here today that put the loop together at Atlanta BrickCon for this show. So let's just go ahead and start off. So we're starting off with a Archimedes screw module. This is close to something that Mako designed first. So it uses the quarter gear racks, also known as banana gears. Uh, and it's pretty simple, just pushes the balls up right through the middle. It's always awesome to be able to see through it and see the motion of the balls going up. And then we move into uh, Matt Norman's Solaire. So that's just another module using those gear racks but using it as a sweeper mechanism, another really cool design. And then we move over into a line of three workshop modules. We got two 2017 Brickworld workshop modules and a 2018 Brickworld ball pump. All three really reliable modules, great starter modules for anyone looking to get into GBC. Then we move over into uh, Mike Edwards' section. He's a great builder, he's also a magician, really cool guy. This is a conveyor. This is actually the uh, input for Berthel's Rainbow Wave. He st I think he started with the Rainbow Wave, but that's a really hard module to get working. So he ended up just cutting it off and use th using the input as a module itself. So still a neat use of the module. Then we move into a Big Stepper by Staffen. Uh, he's from Sweden, and it uses the new frames. Uh, just a really big stepper that can take a lot of balls. Then we move into this past year's Brick Fair workshop module designed by Brian Bell. It's just a stepper, a really neat module. Kudos to him for designing such a great module for a work to be a workshop module. That's I, awesome. I love how you can see all the moving parts underneath yeah, there as yeah. well. And that's, and that's meant so people at the workshop can see exactly how a stepper works because some people have no idea how that would even how to build something like that. So that's all about spreading the idea of GBC and getting others interested in it because we need more people in the GBC community every day so <laughs> then we move on into another workshop module that's the 2018 brick world ball pump with an extended ramp instead of just the ladder move on into another one of Brian Bell's workshop modules now this is the 2018 brick fair module it's just a stepper it's got the three steps uh, some people have modified that module into a reservoir adding the two side panels uh, take a lot of balls and dispenses them at one ball per second, which is the standard. Then we move over into an interesting design. This is by Lego Marble Run. Uh, I don't know his true name, but I know that is his screen name. So basically the balls fall in, and they, as it rotates, they're spinning up through the drums. So it's really neat idea. I know Hugh Millington has made a different version of it with a different frame, but the whole mechanism, that's, that's a really smart idea. Something different. That's what we're always looking for. Then we move over into this, this past year's uh, Brick World Workshop modules. Just a wheel. Something simple, elegant design, just another neat starter module for anyone looking to get into this. So then we move over into Brian Bell's conveyor. So this is his original module. Uh, he used this for his bridge, the basis and he built a nice zigzag ramp to get the balls back down to where they wouldn't bounce around before going to the next module. And this one, it's kind of hard to see on the back side here, but you can see the different gearing and how yeah. fast those are moving. And that goes into every module on the table here because we cannot have them being direct powered by uh, just the motor because that would be running too fast. We have a standard to follow. They have to be followed um, to where we're not flooding the, the layout. We have to keep the rate good. So then we'll move into a Brick Fair Workshop Module Sweeper. Nice design. I think it's designed by Nate Rank. So pretty cool module, just something different. We move over into another 2017 Brick World Workshop module. And then we move over into Lassie uh, D's pump. So that's a different pumping mechanism from the workshop module. And he's got an interesting clutch piece put back here on the back. So that's the new clutch piece that just came out, uh, I think, this past year. So Lassie actually built his own clutch to protect the module and the motor to where it wouldn't tear itself apart. But um, the builder of this one changed it out and put the new one on. So really good part usage there. Something different you don't see a lot on GBC. So 
Then we move over into Staffan's Cradle Tipper, another one of his many great, simple, reliable designs. And then we got his castle, uh, Mike Edwards Castle right here. I want to give a shout out to that. That's a really neat module, really nice theming. Uh, he's been busy doing magic shows at the event, so he didn't have enough time to fi fix it up uh, to get it in the layout today. But I want to give a shout out. That's awesome theming, something we never see in GBC is theming. And we need more of that because it's the aesthetics and the theming is what draws the people in to look at a module. The mechanism's important, but a good theme always stands out. And that's an awesome theme right there. So we'll move into another one of Brick Fair Sweepers, the workshop module. And then we move over here into another Staffan design. And this is the rotor lift. You'll see another one over there of mine. Um, it's just using timed rotors to sweep the balls up the ramp. So pretty simple, but it still takes a little bit of time to uh, be sure the timing's right to where the transfer between the rotors is accurate enough to keep the balls going. Because if those aren't all lined up correctly, then it's not going to move yes. up the line correctly. Exactly. And they're down to a tooth. They have to be right. So it, okay. And then we'll move over into just a simple conveyor. Mike Edwards found the plans for this online. I think it originally came from a Technic set, like you could change uh, the Technic set into something, but he did it in his own colors, his own variation, and added a little bit of a, a down drop using pin connectors. So kind of a clever, different take on it. And then we move over into another 2018 Brickworld module, this time with a zigzag down ramp, and that is from Akiyuki's uh, zigzag lift. So he just basically copied that and merged the two together to make a really neat and aesthetically pleasing module. And then we move into my own module. This is Banana Gigs. So this is something I designed back in 2018, my first ever original module. And Mike Edwards built a copy of it. It's been around since then. Uh, it's where I started in, in GBC. And it, it's a reliable, nice looking module. So we'll go, keep going from there into the Brick Fair Sweeper workshop module, reliable again. Then we move over into the 2019 Brick Fair module. So this is a good module, but it's pretty hard to get the timing right. And especially for those just getting into the hobby, they struggle because of all the timing necessary to be sure that arm goes all the way down to make the lifter come up as well as dump them out. So in my book, yeah, it's a good module, but it's awful hard for those that are just starting out to get, especially for a workshop module. So then we move over into a module, I'm not sure of the original creator, but I know it's on Rebrickable right now under Aaron Lockhart's page. Um, he made a file for this, so just two wheels using the chrome cups. And I actually tried to do this too, and it's harder than it looks, but it's a neat idea. So then we move over into a simple conveyor. Nothing too special about it. It's a reliable model. It may be based off of the uh, original first Brick World module, but I think it's more of a Lassie D design, to be honest. So then we go over into Hugh Millington's scissor lift. So this is one of his newer designs. Um, basically, it's just a simple scissor lift under it. You can catch that mechanism. Um, it's sliding across on that axle to be sure it's smooth. And it, it's pretty cool. Uses some new parts and just something new he came up with. So then we'll move over into another 2018 uh, brick fair module, and this is the stepper, Stuart stepper again, reliable, good reservoir like I said before. And then we'll move over into Berthel Van Beek's um, uh, rainbow stepper. That's a great module too. And that uses a different stepper mechanism on the bottom, so it actually uses two long beams just to knock each individual axle piston up. And they're all braced by lift arms across to keep them straight. So it's really neat, and it's Really neat color choices, different, you know, just a different aesthetic look. So you combine the Akiyuki look with something with the color. The rainbow effect. Yeah, yeah, just something different. I like it. So then we move over into another Hugh Millington design. Well, it's slightly modified in this case, but it's his back and forth module. Typically, this would have a servo controller and a servo motor to get that back and forth motion. While this, uh, I think it's Andy Bell, was able to... Uh, follow his updated version and build a mechanism to do it without using a servo controller, just an L motor. I always say it's better to figure out, uh, to build a mechanism for something rather than program it or um, use a servo controller or anything like that because it's always more fun. And that, that looks awesome and it works fantastic. So it's a great module. 
Then we move over into another last ED ball pump, and that one actually has his original clutch on it in the back. So something different, and that's a really nice design too. Just a different way of pumping the balls up. We'll move over here into, uh, this is Matt Norman's bucket boost module. So it, there's no instructions out for it, but Andy Bell was able to reverse engineer it from his video, and I think Dunes did it too before, so he had some shots to do it. And pretty simple, uh, just they're timed together to where they transfer bucket to bucket, and he's got a splitter up here to where he can, uh, half of them go on to the next module and half of them recirculate. So pretty neat. And then we move over into upslide. So this is an original by Matt Norman. His just have one of the slides. This has two. So, so you know, another nice take modification of someone else's module and uh, works very well. His original had some bugs, but there's been a lot of reworks. And this has seemed to uh, be pretty trouble free the entire show so far. So nice module. And then we move over into the throne. So this is uh, one of my favorite modules at the show. Um, some different. I mean, it definitely gets a lot of attention. So it's just a brick world ball pump on the back, and it comes up here, and it's got a weight um, d distribution thing that makes the balls fall out and goes down the drain and spins. So, it, it, you know, it's neat. Like I said, theming's everything, and that's one of those modules that it's so simple of a mechanism, but the theming is what really draws the people and gets their attention at the show. So then we move out of that, and that's, that's originally by Matt Norman, um, reverse engineered by Andy Bell. Then we move over here into Hugh Millington's pusher upper. You'll see another one of those on the other side of the layout. Uh, it's like a coin pusher mechanism, super reliable. And then we move over here into a module. I specifically don't know the designer, but I know it's unrebrickable. And it basically uses a simple stepper and it staggers. It uses the same mechanism as the rainbow stepper did but it moves the balls back and forth all around until they leave the module. So I love that. The cheese slope yeah. effect there is so cool. Yeah, it's just, just something different, like I said. Something that's not been done before, and it's just super neat. So then we move over here into the vertical gear lift. So that's all that's using is a stepper to go in and a stepper here, but he's using, using a gear rack and those gears to turn it when it goes up. Neat mechanism, something I've never seen before, and that's been out for about a month or two, and I have one, two over there, so really nice module. Then we move over into Noah's saw blade module. So this uh, was an original module for him, something different, and he actually used this module as a workshop module for a show over in his country. I think it's in the Netherlands. So really popular module, and it's neat that it uses all those little parts because each one of those is an individual tooth and they're combined with Technic pins to form the circle. And then he's got 40 tooth gears as the frame, and it's really nice, and an Akiyuki frame. So it's, it's a sturdy, nice looking, reliable module. So then we'll move over into another one of those conveyors like there was on the corner. So that's just like um, Mike. So that's Berthel's uh, rainbow wave conveyor. So somebody else tried to build a rainbow wave, it was unsuccessful, so they just cut it off and used the conveyor as a module itself. Then we'll move over into Noah's basketball shooter roulette module. So this uses a simple stepper, Akiyuki inbox, and it goes up into the hands, but these minifigures have spring legs on to where when they get pushed back by this hose, they have energy to flip, flick the ball into the basket over there. So that's a really nice part usage because you never see anybody use those spring legs. I, mean, I didn't even know they existed until after this module, but really a, a clever Clever module. Really creative there, yeah. yeah. And then you've got the basketball hoop, so it creates a whole scene here into the module. Yeah, that's, it's something different, and it's actually got basketball players on it, so that adds to it too. Just more theming. So then we move over into another one of Staffan's uh, big steppers, mega stepper with the frames and the big step. And then we move over into Andy Bell's octopus module. I have tried to build an octopus module too, and these are like from Toy Story, I think. And they originally had like a, a printed head on them from the movie, from the official sets that came out with the movie. But the, the balls just make their way up between them, between the teeth. And I mean, there's a lot of timing involved for sure, but that's a super nice module. And he's got a stepper to index them out and a nice input bin. And that's, that's a really nice module there. So we go down a snake slide, which that's one of Akuki's favorite ways to leave a module. Um, get down to normal height. So this is Akiyuki's hockey stick lift. 
another uh, original masterpiece by him. So it uses the minifigure hockey sticks to go all the way up and uh, simple mechanisms, and then it goes down a zigzag lift and on to the next module. So really, really clean design by Akuki. He's known for his his GBC modules, and they're they're crazy. It's so neat to watch the transition the balls make between the yeah. hockey sticks. It's so smooth. And, and they're if you don't notice, they're just a tad bit um, adjusted differently on each one because to make sure they, they can pass each other to be able to transfer the ball. So it, it goes into the fine detail on every module, whether it be timing or just the fine adjustment to get it to work just right. So then we move over into Andy Bell's stepper. So it's just a little small stepper. It's jammed a couple times this weekend because it's got a one ball passage and it's two wide steps. So it, it's all right. It's just a different module. It's kind of got some neat colors on it, but um, just another module. It's kind of a filler because we had more stuff here, but we've had some issues this weekend, so we've made it work. It's what, what else can you do? So we move over into another one of the 2019 Brick Fair modules, the card and lift. That's by Lori. And then we move over into a different module. This was the Bricks by the Bay workshop module from this past year. So it runs a little fast if you build it by the instructions, and it's got an axle that sticks out at the front, which I don't, I think that was an error in the instructions, but you'll see it on mine. But yeah, just a, a different take on a coin pusher mechanism like Hugh did back there with his pusher upper. Then we go over into Andy Bell's clouds module. So this is uh, using these ellipse pieces and a synchronized wave to make move the balls all the way up. It's got a nice Akihuki frame, um, a nice input bin. It's nicely colored to fit the name clouds. I mean, it, it's pretty nice. I actually plan to build one of these once I get home from the show. So really nice design. And uh, he, I think there was a video of this on YouTube, but he was able to reverse engineer it and do it all himself and make the changes he wanted. So really, really nice job there. Then we move over into a reservoir module. So we use reservoirs in the loop to control the, the flow rate. These modules uh, make the balls go at one ball per second, which is what they're supposed to be going through the layout. So that's 60 balls a minute. So very nice for taking a large amount of balls and dispersing them throughout the layout and at the rate we need. So then we go over into Akiyuki's fork to fork. So this is just used as a wheel and forks to get up. So they're opposite each other. The forks are how they're built to be able to pass each other and pass the ball between them. And it's really kind of neat how I use the green uh, bars on it because it just adds to the aesthetic look of it. So really neat module, but also it's hard to time. I don't know, he's uh, done some mods here to make it work, but it's a really nice module. We go down the snake slide again into Pinwheel's Reveal Pump. So this is a another ball pump mechanism, but he's done it differently so people can actually see down in there how the balls are pumped up. And then it's a piston that moves the balls up. And there has to be a check valve system to keep the stack uh, steady so it doesn't fall down each time. So the next ball can get under it. He's done a really nice job of that. And that's just another way of showing people how a simple mechanism works to get more people interested. So then we'll go over into another Brick Fair Workshop Module Sweeper by Nate Rank. Then we go over into Lassie D's Stepper. So this is individual steps with cheese slopes to get the balls up. And it's just a really uh, neat module to watch because it seems like they're just floating up the ramp, but that's super cool. I plan to build one too eventually. So then we go into my section. So this is originally my train loader. This is just, it's being used as a conveyor right now. I had my train back here. It's a powered up train. It uses the, uh, the color sensor to see the yellow and the red on the tracks, but the lighting in here caused it to fail. It's not reading the colors right. So we ended up having to just switch this to a normal motor and build us a ramp here uh, just to hold the spot because it failed, but that's all right. That's Stuff. part of GBC. Yep, yep, and it's really out of my control. It's the lighting and it's the uneven tables and uh, nothing I can do about it at the show. I tried for about three hours, and I'm not going to sit there and baby it all day. I, I can't do that. Um, so then we move over into my official banana gig. So this is was the original. It's been modified since then, of course, but it's close to Mike's. Then we move over into the smallest module possible. So this is a 10 by 10 module. Most 10 by 10 steppers have an actual one step that go up and down. This has four steps, and I, I got there. That's original. That's my original concept. I wanted to do something different. So it worked really well and it's gave me no trouble so far. So something different. 
Creates a lot of movement in a very yeah, small area. And it's, it's, I had to use some different parts, and it, it's really cool. So then we go into my pinwheel module. So that is a sprocket literally wrapped in tread with pins in it. So that is the smallest conveyor technically you could get. Because if you use the smaller sprocket, you wouldn't have enough rise to be able to get out. And that input being still not very deep. So it's about the smallest you could get on a conveyor. So pretty neat. Then we go over into something I call 30. So this is a module that is based on weight distribution. So once it gets three balls in that, it dumps. So once it gets 10 sets, 30 balls, this bottom will dump too. Uh, it's, I don't remember the original creator, but Jude Wright and Dunes did a lot of work to it and made it have a frame and super nice looking, the orange accents. Uh, so you can find it on Rebrickable under Jude the Lego Dude. So he's got a lot of really neat stuff on there. I love the orange and gray look to it as well. That just creates a very nice yeah. scene. Yeah, something different. And like I said, it's all about aesthetics. So then we move over into another one of the vertical gear rack modules. So just like the blue one we saw over there, I followed the instruction, instructions on Rebrickable. Uh, super nice, super reliable. We move over into another one of little Lego Marble Runs drums. So it's been running flawless at the show so far. And this is its first show. Then we move over into an interesting module. This is another Lego Marble Run design. And not very many people have done it. So it uses basically a two lifting arm design, but instead of it just lifting them up, they turn midway because the one gear is stationary while one turns, which causes it to twist. So you'll see they come up and they twist. Really neat idea, and that's a really neat mechanism and a way to get the balls from point A to point B, something different. I really, really like that. It was a little bit hard to build because of the timing, but uh, well worth it in the end to have such a neat module. Then we move over into another Hue pusher upper module. So just that coin pusher design, really nice design again. Another one of Staffan's um, rotor lifts with the timing like we talked about over there. So really nice module again. And that is, that's my module I brought to me with the show. And then we got an Archimedes screw. This is pinwheel, Hubert Rabago. He named it Twister, I think. Really nice take on an Archimedes screw, not using a whole lot of parts. Simple design, nice use of these actuator parts down here to get that angle, and, and really clean clean design, something I, I really like. And it, it does use a lot of parts, so way, great way to do something like this with not using a whole lot of parts. Good part usage, too. And he also used the 3x3 three three biscuits, so that's, that's a newer part, so kudos to him for trying that out. He's done a lot with the newer pieces. Then we move over into another 2017 Brick World Workshop module, a 2019 Sawtooth Workshop module, a Card and Lift Workshop module from Brick Fair by Lori, the Sweeper Workshop module from Brick Fair um, by Nate Rank, and then we move over into another Bricks by the Bay Workshop module with the, just the simple, simple coin pusher. And then we move over into a, another 2018 Brickworld Ball Pump. And then we move over into, uh, we have a new person who joined us at the GBC this year. Uh, you want to say a word or two about your modules? Would you like to say something? Um, well, this is my first time here, and I don't usually build them this big. Uh-oh, that one broke. I don't usually build them this big, but I just wanted to be heavy duty and make sure that they're super reliable and not have any problems. And so far, I haven't had any problems. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Well, that's good to hear. Awesome stuff. Keep up the good work. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's a uh, first-timer at the show, and I wanted to be sure he, he got a shout-out there because he's done amazing for us, helped us out tremendously, and he's uh, definitely been a team player helping us out because it is GBC is a team effort. So he's got these two modules here, really nice, big modules, something different, really neat, reliable, haven't had any issues. So then... We go into a line of Mako Art Steppers. So he used these as a workshop module in uh, like Scarebeak Weekend, I think, somewhere over in Denmark. And uh, Brian Bell has actually chained them all up using his drive unit to where they all run off an XL motor. So a really nice setup here. We use this to uh, keep the balls at a slow pace around the layout. So he's not running it super fast. He's only running it like speed two or three. And it really does well. In the corner there, we got another 2018 Brick World Workshop ball pump. We got another Brick Fair Sweeper by Nate Rank. 
We got Brian Bell's new conveyor module using the frames and a nice zigzag lift. Really nice module there. I mean, that's, that's really cool. Then we go into another Brick Fair Sweeper by Nate Rank. And then we go over here into Brian Bell's family module, which this is really cool. This is, I think, based on elves. So it's got a brick world ball pump inside, but the theming is awesome. And he done, I think he did this with his family and his daughters, which that makes it truly special. So really nice design here, really aesthetically pleasing, something different. And like I said, theming, it really gets the crowd engaged. And then we move over into yet another Brick Fair Sweeper workshop module. Another 2018 Brick World Ball Pump, and then Tom's uh, Catapult. So this was Tom's original design, but this is based on probably a, a mix of his and Dunes. So it's called his module has come a long way, but I don't think he's really done anything for it. Though I mean, we've all, a lot of us in the GBC community have taken the step to go ahead and finish it for him <laughs> to give him a break, so he can relax and design more modules, hopefully. So we move over into Brian's bridge. So this is like his little two, his two little conveyors. This is like a bigger version of it. Same input practically, uh, using the nice new frames, uh, really sturdy, and he goes over the top, um, just so we can don't have to crunch under the tables to get out. So a nice, it, it, it's definitely something we need in the loop. And then a nice zigzag lift like he's used on every other module back there. So that that brings us to the end of the loop. That's it. I mean, a very impressive display here. So I know this sh this whole show here in Atlanta is one of the newer shows, but you guys have a, a great display. How many people were involved there with this? five of us involved, and there's about 70 modules, maybe a little more. We've had a couple of uh, modules where we've had to put some other stuff in today. But uh, we were here, I was here last year at the Cobb County Civic Center. I don't think you guys were here. Um, we did this, and it was maybe a third of this last year so we have grown tremendously and the show was packed this year and last year we had plenty of room and you can't even walk down the hallway here so it's it's incredible what what nick uh has and, and the rest of his team has done at this show and incredible what me and the rest of these guys have been able to put together as far as the gbc at this show because uh it, it's just amazing and people are uh, amazed because they've never seen anything like this around here so it's one of a kind and i hope we can keep doing this and keep getting together and putting these awesome layouts together in the future because uh, that's what GBC is all about. For sure, and if people see this video and are interested in participating, is there room for more people to join next year? Of course, yeah. Any show, we, we're always looking for new people. We're always looking for those, even if they just want to come and help us collect balls during the day, just to spark that interest in getting in, involved with this because, you know, a lot of our GBC people are sadly, you know, getting older, and we need – uh, more younger people to get involved, more people to crawl under the tables and wire stuff and do all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, we're always looking for more people. Check it out. Facebook, uh, Discord, YouTube. You know, it's it's everywhere. Just be sure to check it out. And your, you guys' videos are a great example of that. Shout out to you guys. So Thank you. Well, we keep doing them, and you keep up the great work here. Thanks for taking us around. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much.